All right, so here we have a true, uh, oh, let's see, this is the Unix PC 3B1, which actually does have screws here and here on the other side. So we've got two screws here, two screws here, two screws here, and two screws here. So at this point, I'm just going to take them all off because we're going to do a disassembly on the monitor section of this, and we're going to explore... Uh, the possibility of repair and replacement of a broken monitor neck because that's just no fun absolutely no fun where is uh, I have a little parts bin here somewhere don't I? no? yes I do, it's right here right there I knew I had it I knew I had it right there Can't lose the screws, that's just no fun. Gotta make sure these things stay in place. Alrighty. We're just gonna take it all out at once here. Removing eight screws. This one's already been mostly disassembled. It was cannibalized before I got it. It was a donation to me. And uh I'm very thankful and grateful for that donation. Thank you very much. We will put this to good use, and the Unix PC 3B1 shall live on. Now I'm throwing screws around. That's no fun. Okay, good. Set these aside. And uh, now, all the screws are out. We're going to flip this thing over without it coming apart. The way I'll do that is I'll get these little stand things out of the way. And I'm just going to grab it right here and muscle it over. It's not light, and I like to be gentle. Since the monitor neck is not broken, I don't want to compromise it. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. So at this point, the whole thing should come apart because we've got screws. I think every screw is taken off. So let's just do a. Huh. Let's see here. This one. This, <laughs> this one's been completely disassembled. So I don't think it's going to work this way with the real one where the whole thing comes off like this. But, you know. Someone's already gotten to it. Anyway, let me simplify this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this out of the way on this one, and we're just gonna have these two shell pieces here. Hopefully that won't go anywhere. Delicately balanced. Alrighty. Now, let's have a look at the underside of this, just for fun. The motherboard is out, so now we're just looking under here. So what do we have? We should have two pieces that should be coming apart. What is holding them? Apparently nothing. Apparently nothing at all. So, like the uh, 3B1 that I did, or excuse me, the regular Unix PC that's not the 3B1 that I did a, a disassembly of, we see we have these tabs right here. These are going to be very important to have a look at. Um, see if I can get a better view on those right there. Right there. These tabs right here. So, we're going to want those to come off. Now, I don't think I don't think it's going to be possible. The only the only reason I was able to take this whole thing off at once, as you'll see in my video, is because somebody had already disconnected this. So, you shouldn't have that possibility. So, let's try to do this in a way that's probably going to be the the disassembly way on a on a real machine. Oh, look, we have fans falling out here. So, let's widen this back out. 
and set the fan aside because they're just flopping all over the place on this one that's already been relegated to parts. And uh, and of course, in the process, it just came out. So what I think we're going to have to do is, you know, I think the answer is just going to be tip it forward and then out. But you saw me do that. I really don't think this is any different. This is any different with a non 3B1. Uh, in order to check that and verify that, I'm actually going to grab the. Uh, I'm actually going to grab this piece from the non 3B1. Let's see how it's different, because this is definitely the 3B1 with the extended head here, with for the hard drive. You can see this, you know, because the other one that I took apart does not have that. But let's see here. Yep, this is the non 3B1, and it appears identical. So we have these tabs here, and we have these tabs here. There's no difference that I can see, except, let's have a look here, the way this part is designed right here. So let's get a close-up on that. Right there. So we can see that this front, that's a screw hole, and on the non-3B1, the older model, just the 7300, this, uh, this is a hook, right? So you've got a hook and these, you've got a hook in these tabs, and this one is a screw hole. So that's going to be your main difference right there. That's going to be your main difference between these two. So this is your 7300 order model, and this is your 3B1. So they are not actually identical because this piece would make these two completely incompatible. So that's going to be how you're going to tell this part, uh, this piece uh, apart from 3B1, regular, older, 7300. There you go. Now we know. Um, also interesting to note that the, uh, the, seven, the, the 3B1 uh, is missing a fan, and they just have this sponge thing. Now, I've, in other ones I've had, this thing is horribly corroded. Uh, it looks like it's got a nice little filter of some kind in there, but I guess this is where you suck in the air. <laughs> One of the places. Or maybe they just filled it. I mean, maybe that isn't, you know, it almost looks like that's not impervious to air. It is impervious to air, meaning that air won't flow through that. So I'm almost wondering if they just blocked that off because they only needed one fan. It seems odd that they would increase the equipment in there and the size of the hard drive and reduce the fans down to one but they did maybe somebody could explain why they did that because i'm not able to i've never seen a good explanation for that but anyway i digress also i think on the front we see the difference in the front badge between the two um either 40 megabytes 20 or nothing uh and the 3b1 always has this 67 a megabyte badge here, I believe, because that was the extended height hard drive, the full height, double height, whatever you want to call it, that had a whopping 67 megabytes in it. Oh, yeah. So much fun. And, of course, that's the whole reason that we have this extended section right here on the cover. You know, it's to make the extra room for the hard drive, because otherwise it should still fit within the same chassis. So... Anyway, there's our difference right there. So let's set these aside. We're focusing on this monitor now. This monitor. This is a 3B1 that has not had a neck broken. And we're going to keep it that way. Um, but let's have a look at some other things here. Let's have a look. Now, I am actually going to go through the process of not taking this apart. <laughs> I think I'm going to take apart another one. Because I'm going to send this to someone that has a broken neck on the on the monitor and use this piece to replace it so I actually don't want to take it apart because I'm hoping that he can put this a play in place just the way it is so I'm gonna actually show the process of disassembly on this side of disassembly on this side so that uh, we can go through that now remember this is not just gonna be flopping around in there the way I showed it if if you're taking this piece off you're gonna have to go through my procedure which I show in my other video full disassembly of a Unix PC and you're going to want to see how I actually take this apart and the lengths that we need to go through 
in order to get this uh, piece loose from the motherboard. It's tricky, it's definitely not an easy machine to disassemble, but let's see what we have here. Now, on the monitor, we have four screws. One, two, three, four. Let me show you on another monitor that I have. Here is another monitor. We'll set this right over here. Here is another monitor right over here. And uh, actually, this came also off a of 3B1 that was shipped to me. And look, the neck broke right off, and it's all messy. And this is probably how the broken ones look right now. We're not going to worry about this. I might be working on a process to repair or replace certain parts of this so that uh, we don't have uh, useless Unix PCs with broken necks all over the place, because that's just no fun. But that said, we're at least just going to go through the process of replacing this. So understand that there's four screws. These I already took out, these two here, and these two here. And uh, I believe that those should just come out. Now, uh, first, I think we're going to take this back cover off right here. Move that over a little bit. I think we're just going to take this back cover off. It comes off extremely easily. For example, on this one, the screws are already out, and you literally take the screws out and you just lift it right off. Literally. Don't stick your fingers in there. Remember, there's a flyback transformer, which could kill you. On the bottom, actually. But hey, if you know what you're doing, yeah, it's your own risk. Anyway, I digress. We do need to take this off because I think it inter... Yes, it does interconnect. This part here does interconnect with the bottom of this lip right here. So we are going to go through that process. All right, so I'm going to put this back on and put it away. Am I? Yeah, probably am. I'll pull it back. I'll pull it back over if I have any problems. It's always good to have parts in varying stages of assembly so that we can see how these fantastic things go together. All righty. So let us remove the back side of this here with these two screws, one and two. And pull that right off right there. Very nice. And so now I've ever next, not actually ever done this before. So we're gonna see how it looks. Uh, we're gonna wanna remove these four screws. But first, we have this cable. So let's work with the cable. Um, the cable, we're going to have it stay inside of here. I think that's going to make life easier. So let's tip this up this way. And uh, let's have a look at the cable. So the cable is right here. The cable is right here. It has a ground strap here. And uh, it has uh, an audio connector right here. And the audio connector is rather dainty and delicate. So I would encourage you to be very careful for that. So uh, let's see, how do I want to go about this? I've done this a few times. And then we have this, uh, this zip tie right here. There's just no choice if we're going to take the, remove the cable than to undo the zip tie. And then there's another screw down here on the side. So let me go through the process of taking all of this apart. And I believe that that should, that should disconnect it all the way down. So. Let's start with uh, this ground screw right here. And for thoroughness. Oh, that doesn't come out of there. That's handy. Yeah, okay, let's see. I've got one of these right here. Is that the case? <laughs> Here's one that I have. One of my other ones that are in various states of disassembly. And, well, that one came out. <laughs> so, why? It's logical to believe that this one will as well. Oh, look at that, it did! <laughs> Wasn't that great? Okay. Well, here it is right down there. There we go. That's it. Let's put that away right there. So, we have that off. So now, uh, let's do this. I'm going to take this piece off next, right here. And uh, let's have a look at what that looks like. It's always helpful to have parts around to refer to. These wires are also fairly delicate, uh, so I don't really like to 
pull on this. I like to pull more on this. I think that works out very nicely. And then you can see just exactly how dainty and fine those wires are. Those could just pull right out very, very easily. So there's no need. You'd have to go through a repair process. That's no fun. And besides, the person I'm sending this to probably won't appreciate it if I damage the cable, then it won't work for them. And again, no fun. Okay, so let's pull this off. Just rock it back and forth here a little bit. Let's see here. Get a little bit closer so that we can see what is going on. There we go. That looks good. That looks good. Move that back and forth here. That came off fairly easily. All right, so now there's that dainty wire. That's a little bit easier to get to. Now this, at this point, this is, is a very strange thing because in the all past ones I've worked with, these wires are very th thin and fragile, and this connector is extremely tight, uh, extremely difficult to get apart. It's like a poorly, you know, milled Molex where, you know, it must have been designed for much, much thicker wires because it's just rough. So, and oftentimes I feel the need to get a screwdriver out and pry in that right there. So, well, hey, let's just do that. I have screwdrivers here. Let's use them. Here's one now. Here's one now. Let's see here. Here's one now. There we go. Just pushes that apart just a little bit. And, and you know, I'd like to grab it by this side and just leave this as free flowing as possible without putting any tension on it. Those dainty wires. Dainty. Delicate. There we go. So now this entire thing is free. So let's grab some scissors or, uh, eh, let a small... Parts cutter here. There we go. It comes right off. Okay, so now we have a screw down here on the side. So let's widen out just a little bit. It's actually down here on the side. So let's tip this over and let's have a look at what that looks like. There we go. Right about there, and I'm going to put some support. I'm going to put some. Let's widen this out here. I'm going to put some support underneath here, just like that. Did you see what I did? Let's make sure you can see what I did. Just put some support under here, just like that. I think it's going to make it a little bit easier. So I just grabbed one of these things, just like what I used to turn it upside down, the dangerous way. Make sure that it was protecting the neck. We're going to take this screw out right here. So let's do that. There we go. All right, that screw is out. And actually, at this point, I think I'm going to put these two screws back in. I like to do that, especially when I do this, because it's really easy to reassemble. And then I have this one right here. And I won't show you again, but you hopefully remember I pulled it out right of up here. This is the one I dropped on the board and used my tweezers to pull out. Okay, here we go. Those are in place, not too tight. At this point, the wire should be completely free to pull out. Now remember your routing. You want to have it come right up through this section right here, right up through right here. I don't know that there's going to be a lot of other options, but on the... Uh, you want it on the, as you're facing the monitor, you want it on the right side, you know, and as you're looking down from the top, you want it on the right side. I guess it's only the left side if you're looking at it from the back, but you get the point. All righty. So now that we've done that, let's see about ease of getting uh, these four screws out while the monitor is in place. So I think with some adjustment, we should be able to do this. So I'm going to tuck this away in here very carefully because I just don't want to pinch it. And so, set this aside. Let's turn this upside down carefully. And the view is blocked. Let's see here.
Let's see if we can do the front ones. And we can! One, two. This should work out fairly well. Look at that. So here's the first one. Right there. Number one. Okay. Just like that. Alrighty. And then the second one right over here. There we go. All right, two are out. Now we only have the two in the back side here. So let's see if we can reverse that process. Slide this up and turn. And that's not going to be as easy because that's just in the way. So at this point, this becomes just a little bit trickier. Now, I might, you know, just be able to put a hex um, Allen wrench on here. and But I've not done that yet. So I do not want to do that on this one because I want this one to be manufacturer correct. By the way, on this one, we have a manufacture date, January 24th, 1986, negative 02B. I don't know what that means. But that's probably the assembly date, January 24th of 1986. So this being a 3B1, the fact that it's 86 and not 85 makes sense because, you know, it's a year newer. A whole year. All righty. Let's see here. Let's tip this forward. Let's see what we have. Might not be a bad idea to put a... I'm going to sweep this, get the grime off. Maybe, you know, when you're doing this, you can put a towel down just to make sure. This is a pretty smooth surface. If I keep the grit off, I'm not going to be too worried about scratching too much. But, yeah, why don't I follow my own advice, huh? I can get a towel. Look, here's one now just waiting for me to have just such a requirement. There we go. Okay. Now, set this here like that. This way, as I wrestle with this, I won't have too much of an issue. Maybe tip this. Is that? Yeah, so I think we want it as far as it can go. That's probably going to be the easiest right there. So I'm going to grab some more of these, set this under here. These are very, very handy for for stands and with a small stubby screwdriver as long as it's stubby enough this should not be much of a problem so let's see if I can find that small stubby screwdriver oh think hmm well I guess I'm not as well prepared as I thought I can think of a couple ways to get a small stubby screwdriver. There's definitely a way to get a small stubby screwdriver. That's stubby. That's like too stubby. Let's try, and that's too long. Alrighty. Well, let's see here. Let's try this again. See, the hard part here is actually getting it into the screw because it's just so short like that. Okay, so there we go. Now it's into the screw. 
But now, how to turn? Well, we could grab some pliers and do this. Let's see how this goes. I just recommend getting a short stubby screwdriver, but I'm a little limited on time and I want to get this video done, so. A short stubby screwdriver is the answer, if you have one. I highly recommend it, but I guess I'm demonstrating here that it's not a requirement. It'll work as long as your stands don't slip out from underneath you, like this is doing. I've got Unix PC parts falling out all over the place here. Yeah, this should this will work. It's a little bit of a pain. It's probably painful to watch, which is really good that you can, you know, just skip ahead. Back in the 80s, we called it fast forward, but at this point, you just skip ahead. Not great. And we're almost there. All right, one, three down, one to go. I think. Come on. You can do it. All right, that's definitely out. Now there's there is some paper and a ground thing under here that we're going to be very very careful about. So let's watch that. There's paper under here uh, with the way that these things connect, and I think you know it's fairly valuable if you're doing a restoration for those things to be preserved. So we're going to do our best to preserve that. All righty, here's the last one. And I don't like working like this, so I'm going to turn this around like this so that I can actually get at it. There we go. Alrighty. Always better to use the right tools. I am tightening that. Let's loosen it. Curious to me what would be far superior is why am I having this problem? It's the last screw. Of course it has to be a problem. That other one was just too easy. Well, I'm either going to get a socket wrench or vice grips. Because it's not moving. Yeah, it is. It's moving. Ever so slow. This one's just being difficult. There it is. Whew. All right. There we go. Almost out. And that should be the last screw right there. Oh, now I'm making a mess. Okay, there it is. All right, now let's tip this up again like this and uh Maybe not. I want you to be able to see this. So at this point, this is fully loose. And you know, the paper is sticking to this. And I think we're just going to keep it that way. So we lift up, and it's free. Completely free. This should pull right through like that. No problem. There we go. And you see what I mean about the paper? It's ground paper. All right, so let me take this, set this aside. Let's have a look at the, the piece here. So this is the piece that breaks. Actually, there's small pieces in here that breaks, but if we want to do a, a quick repair, this is the best way to do it with all original parts. So here it is, the neck. 
These pieces in here are what ends up breaking when it's put into a box and not packed properly and the flops all over the place and it's dropped on its side and it's shipped barbarically. There we go. That is it. So this thing is now ready to send on to the newest recipient, to the next recipient of this fantastic, fantastic piece here. All right, so you know what's really convenient? If you end up using the Clorox disinfectant wipes for assistant stand assistance here, you could just pull one out and, uh, well, look at this. Clean it off with that. And it is easier to clean it off once you've disassembled it. Look at that. Cleaning all this years of dirt and dust off of here. A little bit of this label goo. That might take a little bit more work, but at least I'll get the the initial grime off of this from the shelf from under here. At least. Make that look better. Presentable. So that uh, it's in good condition for the recipient. Because the recipient deserves this to be in good condition. Oh, he does. He absolutely does. It's a very generous person. Very thankful to be speaking with him and collaborating with him on this particular project. Very. Alrighty. Well, I'm sorry. I know it's not exciting watching me clean up something. But maybe it is. I don't know. You're watching this part for a reason. Let me know what it is. Let's hear from you. Why on earth are you watching a Unix PC disassembly? Do you have one? Do you remember them? Do you just think I'm interesting? Do you think I'm crazy? Well, yes, okay, I'm crazy. You don't have to answer it, I just did. But I'm having fun, man. This stuff is fun. Vintage stuff like this. The more rare, the better. These aren't as rare as I originally thought they were. They're definitely still out there, and that's good. But they're dwindling, so I feel pretty good about saving them and working with them. Well, I just like them. Unix PC. The AT&T Unix PC manufactured by Convergent Technologies. For AT&T. All right, I think we're good here. So let's send this off to the recipient. I'm going to next figure out how to properly box this because unlike I originally thought it would ship in a flat rate box, well, the broken top piece will and this piece will, but together they won't. And since I'm deciding not to separate them, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And now you know. Let me know if you have a broken neck PC. Uh, Unix PC, and uh, this helps you, let me know. If you need some extra pieces, let me know. And uh, we'll see if we can work something out. I may go through a process to repair some broken ones that I have and see if I can help people out. Let me know. Let me know. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.